there has always been a question regarding the origins of Vacchiano's rules. Vacchiano cited many various sources during his lifetime as to exactly where these rules came from. And uh, early on in his career, he was very effusive in his praise of Schlossberg and George Magier of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. We know that because of anecdotal accounts offered by Armando Gatala of the Boston Symphony and Mel Broyles of the Metropolitan Opera, uh, these two being among uh, Bill Vacchiano's most outstanding students in that first wave of group of students he had early in his teaching and playing career. Uh, when my age group came through, there were vague references to Magier and Schlossberg both. And then later on, say from the 1960s on, he seemed to be uh, attributing more to Schlossberg and uh, his high school solfege teacher and uh, a man by the name of Frank Knapp, who was an important uh, musician in the Portland, Maine area. Most of the trumpet players who are still with us on this planet seem to attribute most of the rules to Max Schlossberg, uh, with very little mention of George Magier. I think this is done in error for numerous reasons. I think, as one of my colleagues pointed out, if you simply have a musician's brain and a musician's ear and you listen to the way Bill played and, and you listen to what he said as a teacher, you realize that the influence of Magier is profound. This man, George Magier, after all, was an influential teacher of Adolf Herseth of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, uh, Bernard Edelstein of the Cleveland Orchestra, of uh, Roger Voisin of the Boston Symphony Orchestra. And these were the orchestral players of the mid 20th century. And they were basically Magier students. And so many of the things that these people had in common, I believe, came from George Magier. Although there are also some things that Schlossberg and Magier had in common as teachers. I think the best example is something we call the feminine cadence or the half melodic cadence. This is in music analogous to what would be used in the English language as a comma. If I were to say, I'm going to the grocery store tomorrow, period. I'm going to purchase some milk, period. We have two full cadences. They both stop dead. If I say, I am going to the grocery store tomorrow, comma, and I'm going to purchase some milk, period, we have that half cadence. That comma is the same as a half cadence. There is an, a factor of inevitability that we're not finished and something is yet to come. If it's written with the comma and we read it as a period, then there is no sense of inevitability that something is to come. I'm going to the grocery store tomorrow and I'm going to buy some milk. Those are two completely independent things. If we, if we say I'm going to the grocery store tomorrow, comma, I'm going to the grocery store tomorrow and I'm going to purchase some milk. That's the same as the half cadence, that comma. Both Schlossberg and Magier taught that particular very fundamental musical concept. There are many other concepts that Schlossberg did not teach because he was more of a trumpet-oriented person, whereas Magier was more of a totally musically-oriented person. This is probably due to the fact he was an accomplished violist as well as a trumpet player, and he looked at music in quite a different way. Now, many... Uh, trumpeters today will challenge the idea that Magier had that much influence on Vacchiano and his rules. And I have a couple of examples, I think, that have led me to, to believe what I do about the Magier influence. First, we have the anecdotal accounts from Melvin Broyles and uh, Armando Gatala. 
and others. Those can never be proven because you can't prove something when, when the people are not around to defend themselves and uh, corroborate what you've, what you've said. But I have another example, a very close friend of mine, Mr. Gene Young, who is one of the finest musicians and smartest guys who ever had a trumpet in his hand. He and I studied with uh, William Bacchiano at approximately the same time. He had studied with Mr. Lewis Davidson at Oberlin prior to studying with William Bacchiano. And Lewis Davidson was probably the, the ultimate Schlossberg student to use as a source because he was very close to Schlossberg personally and professionally and, and was one of Schlossberg's favorite students. When Gene Young started studying with Vacchiano, he was very outspoken in letting everyone know that he had never had anything like that, any of those rules that Vacchiano was, was laying on him, given to him by Louis Davidson. Now this is not a criticism of Louis Davidson in any way. He was one of the leading symphonic orchestra trumpet players in the mid 20th century. No question, great player, and probably a great teacher, but he didn't teach those things. He was a real Schlossbergian. And as a second source with the Lewis Davidson connection, I had a couple of his uh, students come from Indiana University when I was teaching at the Music Academy of the West, which is a summer program uh, on the West Coast. And they did not know any of those rules either, again, not to denigrate Louis Davidson in any way, but he was a Schlossbergian and he taught Schlossberg things. And the Magere things were another dimension. They represented another dimension of the work that, that Vacchiano taught. 